welcome to the first installment of the new How to Build Aircraft in AC3D for version 6 and up. I decided to uh, redo this series after um, version 6.0 came out because the interface changed a lot and a bunch of features were added, some of which I use a lot now. So it didn't make sense to have a set of tutorials out there that uh, really didn't look like the tools that you'd be working with. So I made the decision to uh, redo this from start to finish. And this first version will be all about um, assembling the graphics that you will need to create your model. First let me unveil the subject of our project here and that will be the G3M uh, Nell bomber, Japanese World War II bomber. We're going to be making the Model 21 version, and uh, we're going to also set this up for the 2.2 version. Uh, there are some changes in the turrets layout and all kinds of little doodads that uh, set the uh, various marks apart. Uh, before we start modeling, though, I want to touch upon a few things about the type of graphics that you need uh, to, to model from. Basically, you want to have as detailed and clear and crisp a set of graphics as possible. Sometimes it's not always possible, but you try to get the best things you can. There are numerous sources on the net, on eBay, or in books. You, you just have to look around and scour out the best source material that you can. The trick to having a good set of uh, guide visuals is that the dimensions match. Because you're going to be populating your front view, your left view, your top view, all your views with uh, graphics that are supposed to be describing the same object, it makes sense that they all share uh, to the pixel the same image dimensions and this will make for much less distortion when you get working. So as you can see here with our front view here, our dimensions say 2465 pixels by 338 pixels. So obviously the 2,465 pixels are the wingspan. So you want that to match your top view, which also has a width of 2,465. You want your length here on our left view, which is the width in this case, to be 1,627. So you also want this to go from top to bottom. 1,627. You want all your dimensions to match uh, in all all of your graphics. The the one wild card is usually the height of the model because there are usually some discrepancies between whether or not your graphics uh, show gear and so if you uh, work on your images and you make sure that when you uh, change the dimensions you use the constrained proportions feature of your paint or graphics program uh, whenever there is a height element to it that will be preserved also and you you don't really have to worry too much about distortion once you get it in model. Uh, to show you a few other things I'm going to open some of these with uh, Photoshop and show you a couple of other fine points. We're going to open the front view here and we're also going to open the left view here and show you a couple things. First of all, these little shapes here under the wings are uh, cutaway views that show the cross-section of the fuselage at these three points. And these three points line up here along the fuselage with these three lines. In some models that are really complex, it really helps to have these because there's something that's kind of hidden by the nose of the plane or hidden by uh, other parts of the plane that gets kind of tricky to figure out the dimensions and these little guides really really come in handy at helping you figure all those out. So what will happen is uh, when you're creating these in Photoshop or, or PaintShop Pro or whatever sometimes these uh, cutaway um, slices will be in various places on your blueprint or on your graphic and so what you'll have to do is cut and paste them into the uh, area on the front view in, in the dead spaces 
uh, making sure obviously that you don't resize them because then they wouldn't be true to the scale of the model. Um, other things are you you know you want your model to be uh, your graphics to be as clear as possible and also you want them to be as file size manageable as possible and so you know, you, you kind of have to get in there and strengthen a couple of uh, lines you know especially where you get a lot of this fuzz stuff this is just really just describing the uh, paneling and it really doesn't get in the way but sometimes it might so you may have to get in here and strengthen a couple of lines uh, what I've done here is to use white in the windows so that it stands out kind of from the gray sometimes you might even want to take the gray space and make it a different color just for contrast because sometimes you'll be really zooming in far with this uh, in AC3D and you know you'll really want lines to be as crisp as possible for the close-in work other things to keep in mind are to make sure that when you um, finally crop all of your graphics that you know you're right to the tip of the nose right to the back of the tail or the farthest rear area right to the top of the uh, um, vertical stabilizers here right at the bottom here all of these things you want to uh, to be as closely cropped as possible um, some programs have a uh, extents feature which basically um, scours the graphic for the the very very edge and just uh, eliminates uh, anything to the outside of that but at any rate you want to make sure to crop all your views as closely as possible make sure that they have the same relative dimensions uh, along the wingspan and the length of the aircraft knowing that the height is kind of a wild card and then uh, you should have a good set of uh, guide graphics to go from so in our next installment, I'm going to show you how to import these into AC3D, and then we can get started modeling.